podcasting from Fort Wadsworth, Staten Island, New York. This is the Brooklyn Baritone Podcast. Hey everybody, how are you doing? For me, it's good morning if you can hear the birds chirping. But for you, it could be the afternoon, it could be the evening or the night. Whichever you choose to listen to me, it, it's all good. And I appreciate the support and the listen. As I said earlier, I am at Fort Wadsworth Historical Army site. And if you're looking at this on my YouTube channel, and if you are listening on the podcast audio, you can try to imagine... To my left is the Verrazano Bridge, and to my right, if you can see, it is the New York City downtown skyline. Fantastic place if you want to come here and check out the sights and the views. Very peaceful place, especially early in the morning. Well, I'm going to get into this podcast episode. This episode title is Are We Learning? And I'm going to kick off Are We Learning with some statistics about garbage, about trash. Yes, not tabloid trash, not reality TV trash, but actual factual trash. So when I segue into this now, we're going to talk about the New York City Sanitation Department. As always, I like to kick it off with some statistics. And here we go. Here's some things about the Sanitation Department that we all can educate ourselves on. The New York City Sanitation Department budget for fiscal year 2020 is $1.7 billion, well, $1.77 billion. There are 10,207 positions in the New York City Sanitation Department. That averages to a little over 2,000 sanitation employees per every one of the five boroughs, should you spread them out. New York City Sanitation handles 12,000 tons of garbage per day. Handling waste matter and keeping the city clean plays a major role in curbing the spread of diseases and infections. So, in New York City, I know definitely, I'm not too sure about the rest of the country, but by 7 p.m., people usually show their appreciation for first responders, hospital workers, medical staff, in light of this whole coronavirus, COVID-19 pandemic by making noise, clapping, applauding, playing music, just cheering out of their window, giving shouts of appreciation. That's very good, very good camaraderie, and very good unity, very good solidarity among at least the residents of New York City that I know of. But here's the thing. I'm going to get to the meat of this podcast right now. Since preventative measures have been put in place in the form of social distancing, quarantine, and most notable PPE. That's wearing of personal protective equipment. That's in the form of latex gloves and the N95 respiratory mask. You see you want most people in New York City right now for 2020 is walking around wearing these things. There has been a very visible waste footprint that has left, been left strewn about the city streets. So what I'm talking about is basically you can see all these protective gear and equipment no longer being in use all over the streets. We're getting closer to the meat. We have billions of dollars that are going into sanitation. Thousands of sanitation employees heightened awareness of supposed quote unquote cleanliness and hygiene. Though we, can, we still can't seem to get everyone on the same page to keep clean and respectable surroundings. So what I'm getting at, what I'm talking about trash is basically the trash that we continue to generate. Now I understand that we're going to have waste products. We're going to have things that, you know, as refuse. Once we use whatever it's used for, we can't get any more usage out of it. So we have to displace it somewhere else. But the crazy part is that we're supposed to be having this new mindset and new focus on being clean, on having good hygiene practices. Hence, the latex gloves for protection, 
the mass to keep our lungs as clear as we possibly can. The use of hand sanitizer, the hoarding of hand sanitizer, the hoarding of toilet paper, the hoarding of Clorox wipes, the hoarding of Lysol disinfectant spray. So you would figure that we would have a better approach and a better mindset to being clean. But yet and still, we still are surrounding ourselves with more and more trash. And I'm going to go further. By July 2020, we are looking to have 8.77 million people living in New York City. That is a lot of people. That is a lot of people in one concentrated area. We basically compare to the rest of the country. Now, imagine every single one of those people actually doing their due diligence and making sure the trash is minimized and disposed of in a proper manner. Imagine if every man, woman, and child actually took the time to make sure that whatever that they're throwing out there is minimized. So there's some things that we probably throw out, we probably don't even need to throw out as yet because we probably haven't gotten the full usage out of it, whatever item that is. And then imagine now everyone taking the time to actually put that garbage in its proper place, in its proper container, in the proper receptacle, or even to the proper uh, disposal facility. One could probably easily argue that, yeah, if people did that, then we wouldn't have jobs for the sanitation workers, you know, and people will have that approach like that's what they're there for. And unfortunately, that's a reality. Many people think that way. But the unfortunate part is that when you look at the statistics, so over the years, there are billions of dollars being poured into keeping New York clean. Okay. And that's the whole purpose of the sanitation department. The sanitize means to keep clean. So when seven o'clock rolls around and you're clapping for the policemen, the EMTs, the hospital workers, the doctors, the nurses, everyone on the front line dealing directly with anyone with coronavirus or COVID-19, one of the most overlooked groups usually is the New York City Sanitation Department. Now, I'm not getting paid to talk about sanitation department, but they play a vital role. But yet and still, where we have thousands of employees, billions of dollars to keep New York City clean, and we still can't seem to get it together where we have even more trash now. Now, it was always visible. It was always visible if you just came to the city one time. But now it's even more apparent with this new form of trash in the form of masks and gloves. And you can see it all over the place. Unfortunately, it's very disgusting and it tells a lot. And it tells a lot of the city because the mentality here, the lack of respect and humility to keep our surroundings clean and clear, it reflects us as the dirtiest city in America. Yes, in America, New York City is voted and identified as the dirtiest city in America. Yeah, I don't know. Some people probably may take pride in that, you know, being number one, because, you know, we love saying we're number one with a lot of things. But what does that tell you? Because also what New York City is known for is being the capital of the world. Now, is this an actual reflection of the world that we're just dirty that we just don't care about our surroundings we have a lack of dominion we always promote domination with whatever we do because domination is basically the abuse of dominion when abuse comes waste comes chaos so the capital of the world the dirtiest city in america has billions of dollars to try and keep it clean at one point our i know it used to be way dirtier imagine that but just again imagine every person understanding that they need to have humility and respect and a sense of responsibility civic duty stewardship all that stuff imagine if everyone just kept it clean it could be done i remember years ago going to canada it was mind-blowing how clean it was and i know that's not the only clean place especially you know even in America, they're way cleaner places, but it's mind-blowing, especially when you're used to seeing New York in the state that it's in, in so much years. It can be done. 
So that brings me back to my question. Are we learning? Are we really learning to actually be clean with the social distancing, six feet apart, all the hand sanitizer everyone's hoarding, all the Lysol disinfectant sprays, all the Clorox wipe, all the Clorox wipes and cleaning materials in the world is not going to clean your character. You got to do that. Once your character is straight, once your character is clean, it's going to reflect. Now, I know there's not a reflection of every single person here, but guess what? The more, more of us do it, the more of us are actually going to benefit from it, and we're going to see it, and we've got to be proud. We could probably be a better statistic as opposed to the dirtiest city in America. We could be number one in something else. Well, that's all I got to say. Hopefully, I got you thinking. I hope I sparked your synapses in your brain. If you want to check out any more content, you could go to my website at www.brooklynbaritone.com. You could also check me out on my YouTube channel, Brooklyn Baritone. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook. I'm also on the Google Play Store and the Apple iTunes Play Store. Anyways, you will hear from me next week. Thank you very much for listening. I want you guys to be blessed and know you will love. This is why I give you these messages and these podcasts to make you think, to be a better person, so we can all be better all together. Okay? Anyways, check you out next week. Love you all. Welcome. I'm out.